you welcome back. Right now we're returning to revisit the um, the verdict yesterday in the Supreme Court that declared that um, President Bola Tinubu is the authentic president of Nigeria, and that is final because that was the Supreme Court judgment. And we have a legal practitioner who has joined us this morning to look at that. Um, uh, verdict, as it were, and the way forward for Nigeria and Nigerians, and also the legal system, if we have the time to cover that as well. Mr. Babatunde Jinodu is a legal practitioner who has joined us. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Jinodu. Thank you. Good morning. Okay, yesterday was a defining moment. It was a decider for Nigeria, and the president has been affirmed uh, to have been the one that was elected, and um, he is the president of Nigeria, long and short of it all. I would like to know what you felt about the judgment and all the intricacies behind. Um, thank you very much. Um, I've been following the election petition uh, matter in court from the presidential election, election tribunal and then I, I I was opportune to um, follow the decision or the judgment of the election petition tribunal at the court of appeal when it was read uh, or televised. Um, I was not expecting anything different to be done by the Supreme Court. Uh, considering the uh, surrounding circumstances. Because if we look at the history of this country, and have you seen the Supreme Court obtaining a presidential election in the history of this country? Even in the case of Aurora Bazo Shagari, as old as it was, that even despite the fact that there were glaring uh, circumstances or uh, uh, fact that would have made the Supreme Court to rule in favor of our law. The court still upheld the, the, the election of uh, Shagari in that, uh, in that case. So now in this instance case of um, uh, Matiku and uh, Bola Tinubu at the Presidential Election uh, Tribunal uh, uh, in, in, at the Court of Appeal, so you will see that the whole thing has been done in a way that it won't allow the court to freely uh, intervene because one of the things that I've, that I've noted is that such cases that is very very uh, uh, technical like this and affect the whole country should have been done and decided before swearing in the president. So when you've, you are, you are, you've had a president sworn in, he has assumed office, he has made a lot of uh, decisions you know, that affects the country, now for you to now come back and reverse such a, a, a decision will be very, very difficult. So one of the things that we need to, 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 to resolve or admit or look at going forward in this country is how to determine election petition tribunal matters, especially the presidential election petition tribunal matter before the president or whoever ANEC has declared the winner is sworn in. So that will enable the court to really do justice. I was discussing with one of my senior colleagues this morning, and he was, he was telling me, what do I expect? That do, do you think uh, the Supreme Court judges will obtain the election uh, of, uh, of President Bola Metinobu? That if they do that, that they will not get to their houses. <laughs> you, you can imagine. It is very funny, but it is just the truth. But when somebody has, is, is, is not having the mantle of leadership yet, People can look at him straight to the face and tell him the truth that no, you are not elected. But now it is difficult to tell Tinubu that you are not uh, you, the election that brought you brought you in is mad with irregularities, with um, with uh, 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 a lot of uh, uh, what do they call it, a lot of irregularities and the rest. So it is very difficult for the judges to do that now. So that's one of the things that I've noted. So I was not expecting something different you know, because of the way the whole thing has been from the beginning. So this is history in, the, in, the, in Nigeria. So until we are very, very serious in this country to face the reality, amend the Constitution and the, the Electoral Act again, that's the Electoral Act of 2022, let us amend it further to accommodate the time frame within which the Presidential Election Tribunal would attend to the case brought before it. 
our uh, one of our, our senior advocates of Nigeria, uh, Mr. Bakuba, was was talking about how it is possible for this kind of case to be determined within maybe a week. There's nothing too much for for a, a, such a thing to be done. File your file your briefs and everything, and then the court will look at it. It's not something that you take the one be three one eighty days or whatever before they can determine. No. It's something that can be done within, and it has been done in other jurisdictions of the of the world. That such a thing were determined within one week. Mm. I think it happened in Kenya or thereabout. So we should we need to be serious in this country to address such a thing and be serious with it. Until then, we won't get it right. That is just my take, sir. Are, are you saying that if it were not a presidential election petition, it could have gone somewhere else, and not the judgment that we saw yesterday? Well, it is possible. There, there are a lot of, um, you should have seen in the history of Nigeria, there are a lot of um, election uh, of governors that have been obtained you know, by the tribunal. So it is, that one is it's all over the place. The, the, the uh, um, uh, Marek Beshola and Oshun State was brought in by the decision of the court. So it has been done, that is the case of Marek Beshola versus uh, Oyinola. So it has been done in several cases that the court, the tribunal would bring in uh, you know, people that were support all that were de that should that, that that were deemed to have won the election. The court will bring them in, even though there's there has been a governor that has been sworn in already. So it is still easier at the, at the stage of the state election. But a federal election that affects the whole country, it is very very difficult. Somebody is already sworn in as the commander in chief of armed forces, who has the whole control, he has the whole information about the country. You, know, you can't just throw him like that. It's a very sensitive thing. It's a very, very sensitive thing. You can't just throw him out like that because he can lead the country into, into chaos or unrest, although he shouldn't anyway, but because some things are not in place. So the best thing that could have been done in such a, let me use the word volatile country like Nigeria, because we're in a volatile country, anything like this, <laughs> the country can explode. So in such a, in, in what could have been done in such circumstances that before the sworn in date of May 29, quickly conclude the election petition tribunal, even up to the Supreme Court. Let them hear it quickly. Grant it accelerated hearing, so that it will be concluded within a week or two weeks. Then everybody will know his or her fate, and then we move on. Not when the country, the president is, and even it's not even good for the for the whoever has won the election, because he won't even have a free mind, or he, or he won't be focused to concentrate on the things that he should do as the president of the country for that period you know, during which the, 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 the matter was in the tribunal. So it, it, it's a loss to be, to be answered. So we need to really deal with some things if we are ready as a country. All right, so uh, in, on our electionary process, I also listed some things as a solution to the problem uh, we are facing at the moment. And one of, these, one of it is what I've mentioned, that election petition should be concluded before swearing in. You know, there's no, and there's a need to amend the constitution to that effect. Because if you don't amend the constitution and you go and do that, it may lead, it may cause um, another legal chaos and all that. So the constitution needs to be amended and or the electoral act. So then the issue of electronic transmission of results should, should not be a secondary source, like the INEC is claiming now, but a primary source. What is the answer of, of, of constituting a uh, IREV? when you know that it, you are not going to make it a serious thing to deal with in the first place. And that was the reason why most of we Nigerian youth troop out, you know, in our numbers to go and vote, because we believe that, oh, we are going to be seeing our results on our screen. But now, look at what has happened in the, in the tribunal, and even the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court even made mention that the, the, IRF, the, the result on the IRF would, wouldn't have had any influence on the on the election in the first place, that it is the one that was transmitted, uh, the one that uh, that was collected, that the, the court you know that that's the evidence that the court would deal with. It's not too good. Then why spending millions, or why wasting our money on the IREV on the transmission of results? Then why did the, the National Assembly waste a whole lot of sessions discussing you know, discussing about transmission of results, and even some of them were going to the toilet, and some of them were running away. If you know that you are not going to make use of it, or you are not going to reckon, uh, it, it won't be reckoned with in the first place, or at the long, the long run. Why did we, why did we waste our time to do that? So the whole thing looks like, to me, like a fraud by Heineck. Not by anybody, but by Heineck. 
Nyanek has just defrauded Nigerians with what they have done. Why did you tell us that they are going to transmit the election when what you are transmitting will be different or will not be reckoned with? With what uh, 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 was collected? And what part of the problem why we why, why the INEC and Nigerians raised the issue of electronic transmission was because at the coalition centers or at the respective uh, polling unit, results are being changed before they are, before they get to the to the to, 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 to the to the INEC uh, coalition centers in the respective states. Okay, you're, so you're, now you're, you're it, mentioning you're mentioning right, some of ahead. the things you're mentioning some of the things that um, INEC has to do and what needs to come into our electoral process. Um, we'll go back to that, but now. You talked about speedy, speedy dispensation of justice, finishing these cases before the swearing in of anybody at all. Even if it's a counselor, we should finish it before the person is sworn into office because it will make new friends and have so much influence to influence uh, whatever the judgment will be. But it seems as if, uh, for through the layman's eyes, that the legal system in Nigeria is wired in such a way that it is against speedy dispensation of justice, especially when it comes to a sensitive case. Yes, yeah, someone stole a pot of soup, uh, justice will come swiftly and is sent to jail for five years. But someone who um, has been seen to have uh, embezzled a lot of money will not go and collect a perpetual injunction that he should not be prosecuted. So it delays everything. Uh, like in this case now, so many things were delayed until the time frame given for deci deciding this, uh, this matter elapsed. So how do you think it will be possible to have these swift um, uh, cases or to, to, to treat these cases as swift as you are talking about before the swearing in of uh, whoever is said to have won? Uh, because no, I, I still don't understand why someone will be will be given perpetual injunction not to be investigated if you are a suspect. If you are clean, get investigated and let people get over with it. So why does the court even allow perpetual injunctions or any injunction at all when uh, you can easily just clear yourself? Um, as it is, it is always said that the law um, is a tool for the rich and then it's an ax or an arm to the poor. Now, it is not always the case. However, I'm not saying that it is totally uh, uh, a very um, wrong um, statement, but it is not always the case. There are some circumstances whereby um, speedy dispensation of justice is achievable. And such circumstances are politically expedient matters like this. So in such a matter that you know that it will affect the populace and a lot of faith, you know, future of people are, you know, uh, tied to such um, civil matters, it is possible to achieve speedy dispersion of such matters. So however, the other leg of it that you are talking about that, oh, some people will go and commit a, a small crime and they are quickly, you know, punished and sentenced like that and then the big man would uh, commit with still a uh, uh, public fund and yet it can be in court for years, it is uh, it is part of the uh, problem of the judicial system that we are facing. And that is why we need to make, we need to, uh, to advance in it and um, embrace technology, all right? You can, if you look at some jurisdiction, for instance, you don't need to go to court physically before you get things done via Zoom and just like we're having a Zoom uh, uh, interview now and some other platform, Court matters are being, you know, dispensed with. They are being tried. They are being uh, uh, court proceedings have been, you know, held on Zoom and other platforms. So thereby leaving out the issue of um, coming to court. You are in Abuja, traveling to Abuja to go and do a case and all that. Except there is a very, very, you know, cogent reason to go to go and do a physical uh, uh, session and all that. So those are the things that we need to embrace in this country. Then the issue of um, of um, uh, of long hand writing by the judges also is another thing that delays matters and all that. So because some judges still do long hand, they still write you know with pen and all that. But uh, some in Lagos State, for instance, there has been an improvement in the uh, high court uh, system whereby there are, there are people who assist the judge to do the writing and he doesn't do he or she does not do much writing and all. So it aids speedy dispersion of justice. So however, uh, the fact that 
a, a person who is in who is a big man that has a, a, a case in court or a case an investigation at TFCC as an injunction and all that does not mean that um, the the judiciary system is the cause of it. I, there are some things that even these agencies they go out of their way, they act in an extrajudicial manner, and they need to be curtailed. Such a person can go to a court and file enforcement of fundamental rights to stop the court from further harassing him or her. And you would agree with me, sir, that in this country, some agencies are used as a as a as a, as a dog to you know to which hunt other people that have that belongs to other political sects in the in the country. So that is still happening. So in that in that circumstance, they also need the court to also come and shield them, so that the FCC or whoever, whichever police or whichever agency ICPC will not continually harass them. So and the court in that instance will not say that they should go, they should not disturb them at all. No, the court will only say if you have a case against this person, file a case against him in court rather than keeping him in detention for so long or beyond the required period of time, or rather than harassing him, you know, continually and the rest. So that is it. But in this instant case now, is a case that affects all of us as a nation, that affects our progress as a nation. Just like the case of the uh, Naira redesign. You, you all know, you, you know what happened to that case. <laughs> we all witnessed what happened. So the court in that case was like the, the saving grace. And imagine if that case had been adjourned till uh, uh, three months and people still keep on killing themselves. In fact, if that case had been handled, by the Supreme Court on time and judgment given within one week of that uh, policy by the CBN, those that have those that died in, in Nigeria wouldn't have died if the court had quickly within maybe four days. The, uh, you know the, the the lawyers filed their complaint to the court, they filed their their, their briefs to the court, and then the court had the matter and gives a, a pronouncement within a week or within a few days before people will start going to the street to kill themselves. So these are the things we are talking about about the essence of speedy you know trial or dispensation of justice and look at this present case now there are some things that could or would have delayed the matter you know where well, i'm not part of the, uh, the, the 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 lawyers in the matter then uh the, 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 one of the uh, petitioners he went to, to get some documents from chicago state university which he wants to bring before the court and that's another issue to discuss uh, you know entirely so now the supreme court would not likely entertain such a uh, 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 document because the court is not acting as a court of first instance. The Supreme Court under Section uh, 232 of the Constitution has its original jurisdiction, which is between uh, matters between a state and a state or a state against the federal government. If there's any issue of law or fact that you know cause that there's a grievance between a state and the and a neighbor state or any other state and a state against the federal government, that is when the Supreme Court has original decision as a court of first instance instance. But now, when the court is sitting as an appellate court, the court will not listen to separate, you know another evidence that you didn't file in from the uh, from the from the court of first instance from the trial court. So the court what, will not likely entertain it. However, there's a place of equity mm -hmm. and fairness, you know, and where we, we, then there's another clause in one of our prayers we normally make in court. We call it the inherent jurisdiction of the court. Then we are trying to invoke the court to enlarge its powers, to look away from laws or whatever, and use its own power, its own conscience to do something. So in that in that instance, that is where I believe the the the, the petitioner Atikwa Abaka was trying to invoke that the court should look with anything that any legality and receive this evidence which is very very crucial uh to this matter but the court you know didn't look at it although i've not read the full uh and i did, i was not able to you know to with to, to to look at the televised uh, uh proceeding or judgment now but however I, I will still go through it I, I once i get to the office i will i will definitely go through it today and the point is this the Supreme Court shied away from that document and all that, and that even delayed the process again, going to get fresh evidence. And that's where the issue of pre-election uh, matters comes in. So the court would have ruled in, just like it ruled in the uh, in the in the uh, court of appeal, that the pre-election election, pre election tribunal, that there are some matters that are pre-election matters. So what, and what the court is trying to say is that come, you go, you can't just come in and wake up and bring anything to the Supreme Court. There are some things that should have been dealt with even long ago before you come here so, even so but are, however my own opinion i'm of the school of thought that that should not be a clog to 
doing justice or a kind of uh, bottleneck to the dispensation of justice. That at any point in time, if there is any cogent fact that can be brought before the court in such a sensitive matter like this, that determines the future of our youth and even our unborn children, then the court should be open to do justice beyond legality and uh, any other thing. Oh, well, okay, now that means we know that it is not a hundred percent that nothing can be tendered to the um, Supreme Court when it comes to sensitive matters or any matter at all. There's still that window, right? I just want to understand that. There's still a window that well, is possible that they cannot they, do they, they should, they, You see, it, it depends on our, on, on, on our justices of the Supreme Court. There, there should still be a window to allow documents to be brought. But however, the, the, the hazard that can do to the legal profession is that if that is allowed or encouraged, then people would still want to abuse it. So ordinarily, as it is now, there is no window for such, except the court just want to do use it, uh, the elasticity of its powers to say, okay, we are the Supreme Court and we want to do this. So the court can do it. It's not, it's not uh, illegal or abnormal you know, or immoral for the court to do. No, it, it can, they can take in that evidence of Article Raja Article Abubakar. They can take in the evidence that he has brought in. But if the court chose not to take it in, then the court is limiting itself to the constitutional duty given to it. I didn't mean it has been a case between uh, Lagos State and the federal government, for instance. Uh -huh. the, fact, the case will not even go to the Court of Appeal in the first place because that such a case should, should go directly to the Supreme Court, which it will not exercise its original jurisdiction as the first court and the final court. Do you understand, sir? Mm, I do. Okay, well... Uh -huh. so, 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 now, so that's, that, that's just the bottom here. line of the whole thing. As it, is, as it stands now... The Supreme Court cannot just take in fresh evidence and start like a trial court, like a trial court, because the Supreme Court is not in, in its appellate jurisdiction, will not start uh, bringing in uh, uh, the witness to come and swear, to, to come and give evidence again. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even considering the number of cases that, we, cases that we have in the Supreme Court, the court does not have time to do all that. So the court on, a, on an appellate jurisdiction is just coming to review the trial process that has happened whether from the trial the, the high court down to the court of appeal or whether from the court of appeal you know to to, to to the supreme court itself so those are the things that those are the instances where the supreme court would uh would only limit itself to the evidence that has been given from the trial court down to its uh, the, the supreme court and would not take in fresh evidence you just look at oh from the fact of this case and what the trial court judge has done or what the tribunal has done, is there any miscarriage of justice? So if there's none, the Supreme Court will not look at, it will not even enter, they will try the, the, the appeal. So, but in this instance case, Elijah Tuku Aboka is trying to give the Supreme Court reason to, to, to look at its side and, and, and listen to and admit the new evidence. You know, but even if we come to look at it, I, I when I read the section 233 of the Constitution, the, the, that section states that the Supreme Court should not have, uh, uh, does not have original jurisdiction over criminal matters. Although it has been argued that the issue of forgery is not, uh, can be, can, can be likened, cannot be totally likened to a criminal matter and all that, as, as well as, as, as it concerns INEC or election matters. However, you know, what some, uh, some lawyers have also argued is that the best Elijah Duba can, Duba can get is to wait for uh, if there's any falsification of, uh, you know, reserve, uh, certificate or even uh, uh, line on hold, you know, uh, or anything, any false declaration on oath by uh, President Bola Mehti Nobu, the, that the only thing Elijah Duba, Duba can get is so wait for the next four years when the, the, the immunity that the president has now would have elapsed, then file a criminal procedure uh, proceeding against him. But now as it stands, those things are truly could have been dealt with before the uh, the election. But you is, understand? That, is this that not a problem? Been... Is that not a problem? Because uh, the next election will happen when the president is still on seat. 
At least that's exactly. what happens. Yeah, it, it, there's no vacuum. <laughs> that's, so, that's one of the, the that's first. One of the, your opening statement was that you, when you swear in somebody, like we say in Nigeria, I don't turn tiger with that. There's no exactly. way of removing him. So how can it, that exactly. even work? So then, if he if if he contests again, you know, using the same results and all that, which you are still claiming or contesting against its uh, authenticity, then it means that. Uh, uh, it means that uh, you have to wait for the next. If he secures another re-election, it means that you have to wait to the next eight years because the immunity still spreads beyond four mm -hmm. years if he's declared again the winner. So now and that and those are the things. Uh, well, for me, this issue of uh, uh, Bola Metinobu's certificate saga has been run since I think 2000. Uh, 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 is it 2003 or thereabouts when uh, our our guy, uh, uh, our guy brought it up. Ganefa Emi raised it, and then the whole thing went to court. And I don't know how it was, uh, it, how it was resolved again and the rest. So, but that matter was not concluded anyway. Then, so the issue of uh, 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 of Bola Metinubu's you know, result and some other things, I'm sorry, certificate and the rest has been known since when we returned to democracy. Uh, in 1999, you know, because he was the one that became the, the governor of Lagos State then, and those issues have, you know, you know, come up then, and up to now. So I believe that since 1999, up to now, is enough time for, you know, even if, even if it has not even happened. Look at um, since since this election, since February, when the election was uh, conducted, is enough time to have approached <coughs> the, the, the 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 court. And they and and and, and, and subpoen the, the Chicago State University to so to produce the results or uh, the certificate of uh, President Bola Metinobu and not waiting till now so that because when you are coming to the court you'll be coming with all all your weapon all your bullet but now the a court has already decided and after then you now still sought to get in an evidence and bring in and all that so the court will, will not really yeah. listen to it and take it well, seriously we're, so we're and those are the things well it shouldn't process. be anyway but that is the reasoning of our yeah. justices of the supreme court and we can't fault them because they are the final court and they are in full level there were still injunctions anyway even in the u.s uh, trying to stop the release of documents and all that and it was delayed until it got to one uh, it, it's not even a matter we want to go into right now but one thing is clear, there need to be reforms in critical sectors, need to be reforms in the judiciary, reforms in INEC, and reform even in, even the mindset of the people. Let's start with the judiciary. What, what reforms do you think can come into the judiciary and make it better and more efficient? Just briefly, let's roll over these ones so that we can wrap up. Let's start with judiciary, please. Okay. Okay, now the judiciary... Some of the reforms that we have suggested suggested is that the appointment of judges should be made uh, free from political intervention as best as it could be. Now, when you have a, a judiciary that the judges, you know, are being appointed by the governors, you can't expect them to come in and then still rule against the governor. Or maybe, and most most times, it is the high court judges that are promoted to the um, uh, court of appeal, and then some, if the HC permits, to the Supreme Court. Now, for instance, now imagine some judges that were appointed by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu while he was governor of Lagos State, you know, within 1999, you know, run through uh, the two terms. Now, if those judges have now risen up to the Supreme Court, and here this matter comes before them, do you think that uh, they want to? They want to do many things against their benefactor. You know, they wouldn't want to be they to do such a kind of thing. So those are the things that we need to 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 guide against. The appointment of our judges needs to be politically free. It needs to be free from political intervention. Let it be a separate thing that the National Judicial uh, uh, Council can handle, or the State uh, uh, Commission, as it were. So these are the things that we make the judiciary to be very, very, you know, uh, uh, firm. And then the judges can stand to the truth, regardless of whoever who's us is God. So those are the things that we need to, add, uh, to, to address, the appointment of the judges. And then even the, the attitude of we lawyers as well. 
there are a lot of lawyers that they are the, we, we, we constitute a clog you know, in the will of justice. We constitute the bottleneck in the will of justice. And that is why, as much as possible, you know, I, I try to, to be careful you know, in matters that even come before me. That's a matter that you, know, you don't have a course of action. You don't need to start bringing in you know, illegalities. There are, there are matters that will come before me, and I would advise, please, I would advise my clients, let's explore settlement. Let's discuss. You know, because this matter you may not really have, you may have some else, you also have your fault here and there, look at your fault. So, and I would, I would advise that the best thing to do in this instance is to, to, to explore mediation. Let us see how we can bring in both parties together and discuss settlement, and everybody has a win win, and then we are all happy and we go. So, rather, some, some lawyers will say, okay, I ah, don't worry, we'll be here, I will be filing these motions for you, we'll be here for five years, you know, just like I'm expressing in one of my matters in the court. <laughs> so uh, we got judgment against uh, the, uh, somebody, and yes, the person is trying to bring in an appeal. So um, to the glory of God, we're able to to, to have that appeal, uh, you know, uh, not attended to by the court, because we let the court know that this is just an attempt to delay justice. So these are the things that we lawyers also cause. <laughs> but it is what it is. Lawyers who want to hit. Lawyers who want to take the cases that, they are, uh, that are brought before them. But yet, we need reorientation about how we handle matters. You know, and let us take a you know clear from other decisions where things work better. Not that we just go there. And I like what the court has been doing recently by even sanctioning uh, lawyers that bring in frivolous uh, cases and petitions, uh, you know, uh, like like that. So just trying to cause problem here and there, just like we experienced recently. Recently, you know, during the election period, whereby some lawyers would just go and file some frivolous, uh, get some. Uh, get some wicked injunctions to stop some things and cause problems, cause chaos and all that. And those kind of lawyers were sanctioned, and I think, you know, some, 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 some months back or some years back. So those are the things that we need to do. We need to, you know, uh, you need a complete overhauling of the system, cleansing of the system, you know, within lawyers and within judges. So that is as it concerns the judiciary, sir. Yeah. So what about INEC? Maybe we'll wrap up with INEC. Okay, for, for INEC, uh, it, it's just so unfortunate that I, I myself personally am, am disappointed in INEC. I have to be honest with you. I am disappointed in INEC. The reforms that INEC needs, most of them, they have been submitted to them, and, they have, and most, most of them were replicated in the Electoral Act uh, Amendment of 2022. Which was just amended by the 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 the, the past uh, national assembly. Now, if which was was all brought in, brought in the innovation of the uh, the bimodal uh, uh, verification system, the VIVAS, you know, an accreditation system. Now, if the issue of election tribal uh, transmission, uh, sorry, sorry, electronic transmission of results has been you know encouraged by the the the, the electoral act twenty twenty two. Why did INEC not follow that judiciously? So those are there's no need for need for any. It's just a matter of seriousness that we need. There's no need to start rolling out reforms that INEC. INEC, INEC has been constitutionally reformed by the Electoral Act Amendment. Now it is for INEC to just be serious and do what it owes Nigerians, what it it constitutionally owes Nigerian people, the Nigerian populace to do. So give us a free and fair election, regardless of whoever is in power or whoever is not in power. Just let us know that my vote that I went to vote, that I you know went to stay in the run, uh, in the sun or in the rain to cast, is not useless. That is not too much to ask for. A lot of people were injured on the uh, in February, you know, during the uh, presidential election competition, uh, presidential election. They were injured and yet they still stood and they, they still risked their lives. And what did they get for it? That the transmission, that the one they could have trusted, which is one that they would transmit from the poly unit, is a secondary source. It's not something that should be reckoned with. It's not something that would determine the 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 the, the, the outcome of the election. You can imagine what the Supreme Court said. <laughs> that is just it. Mm. So it, it, it's so it's so it, it, it's so terrible and terrifying that you know. INEC did this to Nigerians. So there's really no reform that I would just suggest that INEC should act within the, 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 the Electoral Act and the Constitution and give Nigerians a free and fair election. 
obey the the directive uh, of the of the of the of the electoral act as regards electronic transmission of results don't make it an, an, an option or a secondary thing because that is the only thing that can make election fair and fair not when somebody has gone to change the results in the paper and then come to to the tv to start announcing a collation no let us know our results even before before we we, we, we we have the election collated let us know what this word a in this local government uh, the result of uh, the apc the result of pdp the result of labor party and the rest not that you now need to come and start waiting for somebody to start we spending three days on the television to start uh, reading out no the code when 2023 we, we should we should have you know gone beyond all this fine i know that everything has its own advantage and disadvantage you can talk of the issue of um, the electronic system being prone to hacking and the rest but this is in this nigeria how are other jurisdictions doing it as the united states doing it you can do it you can ensure that we put a system in place that will be free from or at least a reasonable to a reasonable extent free from anything that can, can, can that can flood the system and we can have this thing transmitted electronically it's the best and until we get that my brother we will not have a good a free and fair election that is the only thing that can restore san sanity and sanctity in the electoral uh, in INEC and even the electoral process generally. Okay. Uh, well, we'd like to thank you, Babatunde Ginaldo, for coming on the show this morning and helping us make sense uh, to the topic we're discussing. Uh, well, we congratulate the, the president, uh, President Bola Tinubu, over the victory. And we look forward to a very fulfilling four years for Nigeria and Nigerians. Thank you to you and happy weekend. Thank you, sir. We've been talking with Babatunde Jinodu, a legal practitioner. He joined us to talk about the uh, victory, election victory of um, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu yesterday at the Supreme Court. So we sit back and this is time to build Nigeria as a group. All of us have a stake in Nigeria and we should do our bit wherever we find ourselves to make sure that Nigeria becomes a better place than it, it is now. Uh, even better than we remember it to be when we beat our chest and called it the giant of Africa. It will take all of us to be able to make it work and become that once more. Like they say, a child is a product of the community and it takes a whole community to train a child. It will take all of us to make Nigeria what we want it to be. That El Dorado is in our palm hands. So this is how we are going to wrap up on the show this morning. I'd like to say thank you to you on behalf of the entire crew of Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Have a lovely weekend. Let's do it again on Monday. <laughs>